it's a whole vibe. Gotta keep it wavy, keep it chill, oh tight. Tell me how you feel, keep it real, no lie. Light another herb, let it burn through the sky. Right, right. Sipping on sangria, playing that's no allegra. Hoping moments like this go on forever. Catch me lounging pajamas in a sweater. Especially when weather's looking sloppy. I turn into a homebody, cause it's the weekend. I don't feel like partying, I feel like sleeping. I don't work tomorrow, think I might just sleep until about noonish. I've been working hard, think I deserve to do this like once in a while. Cause this isn't my usual style. My mind is moving past the limit every minute to mouth. I get Appreciate the time when I can sit on the couch Turn the music up and just zone out, huh Cause it's a whole vibe Gotta keep it wavy, keep it chill, low tide Tell me how you feel, keep it real, no lie Light another herb, let it burn through the sky Right, it's a whole vibe Gotta keep it wavy, keep it chill, low tide Tell me how you feel, keep it real, no lie Light another herb, let it burn through the sky Get in this mood. Only turn it back on when I'm ordering food. And when my pizza gets delivered, going back to disconnected. If you call me and I answer, I'll hang up and blame reception. Got a question or a message? I encourage you to text it. I'll see it when I see it. I'll hit you back soon. But now I stay in tune with this lazy afternoon, like the roots in '94. Asking, do you want more? Yeah, I want less of the drama and stress and interactions with people seeking my patience to test. You ain't cutting me a check, so I ain't giving you time to sacrifice my peace of mind. Cause it's a whole vibe. Gotta keep it wavy, keep it chill, low tide. Tell me how you feel, keep it real, no lie. Light another herb, let it burn through the sky. Right, it's a whole vibe. Gotta keep it wavy, keep it chill, low tide. Tell me how you feel, keep it real, no lie. Light another herb, let it burn through the sky. A cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is 8 o'clock a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Wow, it's look, he's riding. Yeah, but we just started. So, I don't know who needs to hear this, but. I was just reminded of a little something before. So before the mic came on, uh, our newest teammate, Medea, asked about the, the whole Amber Heard and all that, or, you know, the whole Johnny Depp and all that going on. And then we started having a little bit of a broader discussion in regard to, like, relationships and all that and people acting crazy in relationships. And then, like, is it toxic? Is it not? What about this and that?
You're good. Oh, what was he? We good? <laughs> Little symbol was off. Okay, good. Um, so, did they hear any of that? I don't think so. Um, maybe like the half of the. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you again. In case you didn't hear what I said, I was giving you relationship advice. Maybe that's a uh, signal that I'm I shouldn't. Fine. Huh? Maybe that was a signal that I should not give relationship advice. Uh, but it's Monday morning. I think we have the appropriate amount of gremlins here and that is um that's to be expected good morning to all of you dear and beautiful wonderful people i hope that you're all having a good positive and helpful monday morning as well uh cruz ocho good morning ah thank you jim mendoza yeah we lost sound we're training in here today so that's to be expected sarah walker good morning to you jennifer i mean jim mendoza hello there cruz ocho Natalie, bonjour tout le monde. Good morning to you. Good morning from Battle Creek, Michigan. Holy cow, Battle Creek, Michigan. Josie Mendoza Geller. Let me tell you something about Battle Creek, Michigan. I spent a lot of time in my youth in Michigan, in and around Battle Creek, Saginaw. I mean, come on, where y'all at down there in Michigan? Oh, Pontiac, Three Rivers. A lot of time in Michigan. Shout out to Battle Creek. I hope you're having a good time out there, Josie. The time is 8.04. Francis Rodriguez, look at you. Good morning, Francis. Francis, I, I met you yesterday. Remember that? We met for the first time. Classy, crafty wife. Good stuff going on over there. Um, okay. And the conversation that you guys, that the sound might have went out on, I was giving some relationship advice. And I think that uh, that was a signal that I don't need to do that anymore. Okay. Before I get into news about City Hall, I got some City Council Chamber news that's to the tune of $1.77 million, I think you may like to hear. Uh, New England Congregational Church, 406 West Galena Boulevard, is hosting the acclaimed Chicago area chamber music group Orion Ensemble. This is going to be at a concert Sunday, May 8th at 7 p.m. Guest violinists Roger Chase and Stephen Bow will join the ensemble for the fourth of four performances in a series at the church. The public is invited. Parking is free. Tickets for adults are $30, $25 for seniors, and $15 for students. Uh, good stuff going on. I told you, or we told you rather, about this last week, and I hope to see you there. Monica, how you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Maria, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good, good stuff. I'm glad to hear. And I hope that all of you listeners at home, in your car, or in your office down the hall, three doors down from your boss, and you keep your door pulled up and you put a towel at the bottom so nobody hears what's going on, I hope that you're all right, too, working in customer service over there. I know what you do for a living. Uh, Orion's Innovative Programs feature diverse works by composers ranging from Mozart, Beethoven, and Brahms to William Bolcom, Chick Corea, Paul Schoenfield, and Augusta Reed Thomas. You can call 630-897-8721 for more information. The number again is 630-897-8721 for more information. So what'd you do over the weekend? You could put that in the chat. Let me know what you did. Where'd you go? I saw a few of y'all yesterday. I saw some of y'all on Saturday. I even saw a couple of y'all on Friday too. We had a, a couple of libations. Remember that? At uh, Bally Doyle. So what you guys get into? You can put that in the chat. And also let me know how you feel or let us know how you feel with the emoji today. It's a brand new week. And interestingly enough, with the start of this new week, our goose hatched and gave birth to all of her live young. So the goose isn't out there anymore. And uh, interestingly, I was riding my bike around and I saw the goose. I think it was the same goose. She's now down at the water's edge, I think, getting her training on with her goslings. Pretty cool stuff to see. Okay, listen to this, you guys. I got to tell you about something. The Aurora City Council Committee has recommended a $1.77 million contract to renovate the city council chambers at City Hall. Oh, now I know what you're thinking. Renovate that, Curtis? You mean the place where all the aldermen sit and it's nice and they got the nice wood and they got the immigrant, you know, the, the name plates and the little trophy case? Yeah, that place. I was thinking too, like, what's wrong with it? Renovate it? What are they going to make it look like? Well, let's see. The plan also would create a communication center out of conference rooms that would include a new Comcast public access studio and a press room. <laughs> 
Quote, this is a project to take us further into the future in communications. Close quote. That's according to Clayton Muhammad, Aurora's chief communication and equity officer. He said the project is dubbed ACE for Accessibility Communications Enhancement. It would improve the ability to communicate both during live meetings at City Hall and on how things are broadcast on both the city's public access television channel and on social media, such as Facebook and the city's website. Quote, it is a broad-based approach, close quote. We are reviving our ability to communicate in real time with the community on multiple, multiple platforms. There are so many possibilities, close quote. The first close quote was, it was overzealous. The $1.77 million contract would go through the city's job order contracting program to FH Passion, S.N. Nielsen, and Associates. The about $1.77 million contract would be about 65% paid from American Recovery Program Act funds, about 35% paid from the fees the city gets annually from Comcast. Scratch that up, DJ. Hold on. Play, play that back. Run that back. Run it back. DJ. We all a DJ that, yeah, run it back on life sometimes, right? Listen, let's read that again. The $1.77 million contract would be paid about 65% of it from American Recovery Program Act funds and about 35% paid from the fees the city gets annually from Comcast. The company, that company pays the city about $1.7 million a year, coming to about $17 million over the 10-year agreement it has with the city. That sounds pretty fiscally sound to me. Sounds like a good use of money. And not only that, it sounds like an appropriate use of money to be paid by Comcast and use that money to reinvigorate, or excuse me, re, um, to invigorate and strengthen what you already have is a very sound investment. That's smart. That's like using your mulch. That's like using your lawn clippings for your own mulch. We got our own compost. That's smart. The project would renovate the city council chambers on the second floor of City Hall by creating a new, more inviting and usable entryway, opening up the ceilings, eliminating the bolted down chairs, and replacing them with individual stackable chairs that can be moved around. They also could be linked together. The council date would be, excuse me, the council die would be expanded to include the corporation council and city clerk, eliminating a small table in front where they currently sit. Ah, I like that. Yeah, I always thought that was old. Like, why does it look like to kill a mockingbird in here? Uh, the die would include Kevlar as an added security measure. The room also will be made more tech and communication savvy. With cameras that swivel in all directions, new microphones that would have a remote and central com uh, control area, new speakers, and repositioned display areas. <laughs> Part of the reason for the changes is that the microphones currently in the council chambers, uh, chambers crackle and go in and out. Yes, they do. And I watch those city council meetings. I'm always wondering, like, why is Mike Seville so scratchy? He got, he, he need a cough drop or something? Uh, <laughs> Um, so we got to get rid of those. For a while, officials changed meetings, meetings to the fifth floor conference rooms, but the microphone situation was no different there. In the fifth floor conference rooms, known as rooms 5A and 5B, the same audiovisual equipment will be added as in the council chambers. The city council will meet there while work is being done on the council chambers. Um, there will also be a new television studio, including all new equipment, a live video viewing workstation, an editing workstation, a control room for the other three rooms, and an area from which to broadcast live meetings across Facebook, the city's website, and onto Comcast's local television station. Quite a uh, quite a story. Looks like Aurora's coming up. Looks like we, uh, you know, we 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 we. It's we got lotion now, right? No more ash. That was a you guys get it? Do you, you get it? Okay. A little jokey joke. I know it'll it'll probably sink in a little bit, you guys. Oh, that's what he meant. He been getting rid of the ash and making it look good again. Yeah, that's right. Alderman on the finance committee voted five to zero to recommend the contract for the work. It will go to the city council committee of the whole 
with a plan on May 10th, which is Tuesday next week, right? Yeah, because today's only the second. Holy cow. Okay, uh, so what do you guys think about that? New and improved equipment for our great city. I like it. I hope that you do too. The time is 8, 12 a.m. Um, I met Miss Loving Life Freeman yesterday. She does um, body butter. Uh, and it's it smells really good. And I, I tell you what, I had some on my hands yesterday, and it lasted with me. Miss Loving Freeman, if you're tuned in, I think that was you I saw with your avatar in your face. Um, it lasted all day yesterday. I mean, literally, until I went home to cook my marinated chicken breast with wild rice. Uh, it stayed on my hand all day. So even when I pulled the chicken out the pack, my epidermis was still... It was still moisturized i guess right it was really good the time is 8 13. okay um so you guys see that we're doing a little bit something different here in the studio uh if you can see behind me we now have a guest board this guest board right here are oh, they see yeah they can see this guest board right here we have now for all of our guests who join us in the studio when you beauty is forever thank you jen mendoza miss loving life freeman robin yeah robin that was her name she was so cool um this guest book is for all of our guests who now come in. You will sign our wall. Yeah. So that way people can be like, oh, wow, I signed it back in uh, 1980 or um, 2022, you know? And then like in 3011, we'll be like, wow, this is when that person came in. So it'll be, it'll be really cool. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get to the next piece here, but I want to say hi to Michael Rafer. He says, I need a new studio. Uh, Angelica Guzman, good morning to you. And Jen Mendoza had a wonderful time yesterday at our Moms for Moms Vendor Events NFP nonprofit celebration three year anniversary. Thank you to GMA for coming out and all our other friends. Thank you for having us yesterday. It was a great event. Uh, here's the thing. Just to reiterate, just to kind of put the nail back in the the frame that hangs on our wall of beautiful stuff. Good morning, Aurora exists for women in business. Just so that you know, what happened yesterday was just another day in the office for us, but it was very special because yesterday we, I, I did the math, Jen Mendoza, uh, Javier Reyes, Anna from Spots on the Fox, all of those individuals, and Maria who's here with us now, all those individuals were all interviewed when we were at Benton and Broadway. That was a defining time in the show. It was also a special time for all the people who we interviewed. And one year later, what do we see? We are not in Broad Benton and Broadway no more. We then came up. Jen Mendoza then came up. Spots on the Fox then came up. And uh, Javier Reyes is now the owner of um, Java Plus. So much winning in just a year. Incredible wins. So congratulations. Hit the clap for everybody. Clap for the whole world. Where's the how I know the clap is like the clap coming. But she doing your, you know, Maria, you got that, girl. You got that. You got that. We gotta clap on our own. Okay, growth, that is right. Joe Jackson is here. Good morning to you, Joe Jackson. Victoria Hala Maldonado is a dear friend. She's a mom and she's also a fantastic author. Get to know her and Victoria's editing services by following her on Instagram and Face Bizzle. Scott Hayes, good morning to you. Um, and Norma Peterson, good morning to you as well. Lynn Kamaluski Flores, good morning to you, dear friend. First time seeing you in the chat. I hope that we see you forever. And Aisha Saxon, I think I said good morning, Aurora, to you. But if I did not, good morning to you, Aisha Saxon. She is a friend of the show. <coughs> oh, turn. oh, don't die on the air, bro. All right. Um, if Monica, if you could take us to a commercial, that would be so helpful. Or Maria, you could take us to a commercial. And give us three joints and then bring us back. Good morning. Here are our local headlines. Real news, real people, real stories, 100% Aurora. Don't forget to please subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all of our current content. There, you will also watch all of our interviews and receive notifications when we go live. We will put the, the link on the chat. 
The Veterans Gardening Day is taking place at Marie Wilkinson's Food Pantry on Saturday, May 7th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. This will be a day of honoring our veterans in Illinois. Also, this will celebrate House Bill 2894, designating the first Saturday in May as Veterans Gardening Day. See the flyer for more details and thank you to all the sponsors for your hard work. Uh. Starting this Wednesday and continuing to the 17th of May, the Disabilities Listening Tour will meet at various locations in Aurora. Hosted by the Senior Disability Service Department of the City of Aurora, this initiative aims to connect individuals with direct resources. This is a very helpful way to voice your concerns of all members in our community. Scan the QR code on the flyer or call 630-256 Four six three six for more information. Fox Valley Hands of Hope is now registering particip participants for the spring session of Family Forest Days. This will take place this Saturday from the thirtieth, from nine a.m. to three p.m. Hold on, scratch that DJ. He old. He old. Okay. Okay, let's do that again. We like to make sure people know that, <laughs> yes. though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for the community market. <clears throat> this will be in partnership with the Aurora Pride Parade, taking place this June 12th. Do you sell any unique items? Well, you can be a vendor. This is, this is brought to, to us by Indivisible Aurora. Please apply, so uh, we will go ahead and include the link on the chat as well. The... The way that we do things, good morning all of you great people out there, the time is time is 8.19. Um, I got some more shout outs that I'm gonna give to some great friends of ours. Thank you very much for that news, uh, Maria. You did, you did good, you did very, very well. Um, so, before I get into the next topic here, let me see. Aha, here it is. Uh, don't forget our dear friends of um, ACC, the Chargers. Rose Central Catholic High School has their fundraiser coming up, uh, the 26th annual Super Saturday Night Fundraiser. This will be um, on May 5th through the 7th. The hybrid fundraiser will provide participants with a guilt-free shopping experience that will help support student programs. That's this weekend, actually. Uh, so get ready for that, you guys. The Sip and See cocktail reception ticket is $45 per person. Each Sip and See ticket includes an open bar, live music, hors d'oeuvres, taco and dessert stations, one raffle entry for a door prize, and a wine pull. Shouts out. Uh, ACC is a college preparatory school rooted in faith and based in Aurora, Illinois. They have been committed to the spiritual formation and education of students in the Fox Valley area and surrounding suburbs for over 50 years. Wow. Madonna Catholic High School, an all-girls school, and Ron Colley High School, an all-boys school, merged in 1968 to form a co-educational school, Aurora Central Catholic. See, that's why you need to watch Good Morning Aurora, because one day that could be a Jeopardy question. You might win $30,000 off of that, and if you do, 25000 of that should be donated to Good Morning Aurora. The time is 821. Okay. So, uh, next thing, 2022 Spring Virtual Career Fair. Our dear friend Teresa Barrero of the Kane County Circuit Clerk has this going on. Uh, learn all about what the Circuit Clerk's Office is, community oppor excuse me, career opportunities, and the Deputy Clerk's role. Uh, the event dates are Tuesday, May 10th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Wednesday, May 11th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can also join on Zoom. There is a QR code to scan um, as well. All the positions are first shift. Uh, you can call 630-208-3807 for more information. That number again is 630-208-3807. We have shared this to our social media. We will continue to do so up until the dates of the event okay now i saw that a tree was planted or trees were planted this weekend with our poet laureates or excuse me uh our poet community here in aurora um we interviewed leo zarco interestingly enough he is one of many great poets in aurora our poet laureate for the city is um miss karen christensen um Karen Fuller Christensen, I believe, is, is her full name. Um, I have her email address, which is kfc 
Um, that's how I know it. So her, Mr. Zarko, Mr. Stanford, and the group of the A-Town Poetics, of which Yvonne Boos uh, is, a, is a member, uh, they do a lot of good work. So if you are able to, and if you are a fan of poetry like I am, I would encourage you to please check out their works. They are varied, they are many, and they are very good. Uh, a lot of people have a great ability to express themselves with words, and poetry is one of those many mediums with which to do so. And I've always believed the spoken word to have its own power, to have its own flavor, to have its own dynamism. That's the word of the day. The word of the day is dynamism. It has its own dynamism. And, 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 and we want to highlight that. So because we do, please check out our friends in the poet community of Aurora. I digress. Officials from the Aurora, excuse me, officials from the city of Aurora <clears throat> joined forces with local poets to celebrate both the 150th anniversary of Labor Day. Did you know that? M Maria, did you know that? No. Did you know that, Monica? 150 years? Um, the 150th anniversary of Arbor Day and also National Poetry Month on Friday morning last week at a tree planting ceremony in downtown Aurora. That took place at the Green Space on Benton Street during the morning event of Four River Birches in honor of Aurora Poet Laureate Karen Christensen and Deputy Poet Laureates Quentin Johnson, Fermina Ponce, and Anthony Stanford. All were appointed in 2020 and are the inaugural poets in the city's Poet Laureate program. A second planting of a chinkapin oak tree followed a block away at 31 West Downer Place in honor of longtime Aurora Tree Board member and award-winning arborist Bill Chinetti, owner of Arbor Legacy and a certified arborist by the International Society of Arboriculture. Come on now. Come on now, y'all. I know your friend's going to be mad at you. Like, he, he uses words we can't understand no more. I don't want to have beers with him. He's talking about arboric culture and all that. That's right. <laughs> Elevate. It's not Raymond, it's ramen. A crowd of at least 50 people gathered by the Aurora Swimming Stones. That is the display or exhibit that's right in front of SciTech. Uh, and the green space of the West for a ceremony that included a proclamation read by Mayor Irvin, who later award, awarded certificates to all of the city's uh, poets. Mayor Irvin was out there with a shovel, y'all. He was getting his dig on. That would look pretty cool. Good, uh, good picture. Abby Schuler, downtown services manager for the city, spoke before the ceremony began and said the planting project to honor the poets and the area for it along the Fox River were perfect. I think it's a wonderful idea and it's a perfect area. We've got some open space, so what better than a river birch to be planted right here by the river? Um, very cool. I'm a I'm a nature guy. I love trees. I love flowers. I love all that kind of stuff. So anytime I see more green and more nature being planted, I'm happy. And I always thought, you know. That little patch that's right there, because again, you guys, that's right in front of... Oh, you know what? Scratch it up. Yeah, that reminds me. I want to say a good morning and a shout out to Tracy Duran, who I saw right there at One East Benson over the weekend, riding bikes. Anyway, that stretch that's right there in front of the... in front of SciTech where those swimming stones are, it's so bare. There's nothing there. And it's nice, and you don't gotta. And again, we don't need to have every single piece of grass with construction on it. That'd be bad. But it's so bare and so open that, like, I'm always like, could people at least picnic there or something? Could something go there? Trees are a great thing to have there. That's gonna look really good. So I can imagine, I can envision, indeed, I can postulate the image of beautiful. Birch trees, their leaves rustling in the crisp breeze, while starlings, doves, and other associated bird fowl alight upon their delicate branches. The time is 8.27. Y'all didn't know I had poetry in me, did you? Aha! I know, I know. Are you going to clap? Oh, nobody's clapping? That's all right. That's why I do news. I don't do poetry. <laughs> all right. 
Uh, the number one morning show in the history of the world is here, ladies and gentlemen. It's Monday. We're back. Karina Suarez Darkness here. The word of the day is dynamism. It's in the chat for you guys to learn, to grow, and to soak into your own orifice and put out there for the rest of the world to see and hear. Hmm. Diamondism. Please give the desk. See? Now you see that, whole sway? You did it wrong, baby. No. You put, di you put diamond in ism. No, that's not it. Alejandra, good morning to you. Good morning, Gams fam. Tracy Duran, we were just talking about you. It was great meeting you yesterday, Curtis. Thank you for your support at the Moms and Moms video. Oh, Francis, yes. Yes. That's all you. That's all us. Shout out to Classy Crafty Wife and Planned by Francis and everybody else who I saw there yesterday. Okay. Um, Cruz Ocho, good morning to you, dear friend. Thanks for stopping by. Norma Peterson, yeah, it was good seeing Norma yesterday. Good morning to everybody. And uh, I saw, we saw Karina Suarez darted. Who was, oh, Bezel Arts, there you guys are. Good to see you as well. Um, yeah, so before I get into the next, the next uh, article that we have to uh, digest and talk about today, I want to say that downtown's looking really good right now. It really is, you guys. Um, you know, a lot of good stuff has been happening recently. If you guys are keeping your eyes open like I am, always lurking, um, Craft Urban is really coming up. It's taking shape. They got the wood, or rather the frame uh, built, which looks like it might be a covered, uh, a covered outdoor patio. Not too sure yet what the material will be on top of that, but it looks really good. The fence has been... Um, built around that corner as well once again that's right across the street from charlie's creamery that's specifically the intersection of downer and stolp avenues here in downtown aurora that's craft urban uh they're coming up businesses you know it's it's getting made so get ready for that um and all the time that i spend downtown i see a whole lot of good stuff going on don't forget that this first friday uh, may 6th is also the food truck festival um your friendly neighborhood um, housing agency will be out there helping people and letting them know about the ILHAF program and other mortgage related um, programs as well. So if you guys are out and about on this first Friday, come on around to the neighbor project when you see them there. I don't know who's going to be working there, but if you see anybody with a neighbor project shirt on, you're in the right place. Okay. So uh, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is something that I have told you about repeatedly. You know what? This is going to be homework. I know Joe Jackson knows what I'm talking about. I know that Karina Suarez Darden knows what I'm talking about. I know that Michael Rayford knows what I'm talking about. So the rest of y'all, I want to make sure that you guys know and understand what's going on. So this could be a pop quiz question later on in the school year. Okay. Aurora is supporting an effort to defeat legislation that many municipal officials across the state say will weaken TIF districts. And what does TIF stand for? Class, tax, increment, financing, dif the district. What was that? You good? I don't to okay. Monica almost tore up the table, y'all. This shit was. Uh, the city council last week passed a resolution supporting the use of TIF districts and helping to oppose SB 2298, opposed in the state senate. Remember, SB is for a senate bill and HB is house bill. Ooh, come on now. Hit the, hit the ooh for that. Well, we don't have a ooh. We don't have a ooh. How do I know? Yeah, that, that works. Yeah, that's, that, that'll work. Um, yeah, SB and HB. Hold on, let me pour my coffee for y'all. See, we can do that now on the show, too. Can you hear that? Yeah, the greatest morning show ever. See, we coming up. We can pour our own coffee here. Um, listen to this, guys. The resolution, which is basically symbolic, would go to the Illinois Municipal League which would use it as part of its lobbying against legislation designed to weaken the use of TIF districts. Now, as you know, if you've been following along with all of the developments, plural, that have been taking place and coming about and being voted on and receiving resolutions in favor of 
TIF districts have been integral in all of that. That is a way for the people to get taxes levied for their purpose. It goes into a different fund. I don't, you know, the article detailing it in better detail uh, is not with me at the moment. This is specifically in regards to the Illinois Municipal League. Alderman passed the resolution without comment, but a memo that accompanied the resolution written by city staff members for Mayor Irvin pointed out the positive effect TIF districts have had on the city. In TIF districts, assessed value is frozen for the purpose of tax collection. And as the property of the value, excuse me, the value of the property rises, the taxes created by increasing property value go into a special fund known as an increment. Ah, thank you. That money is used for expenses related to the development. Staff said both the use of TIF districts and the River Edge redevelopment zones have allowed the city to undergo, quote, significant changes over the past several years, close quote. Whose quote is that, though? See, I'll teach y'all something real quick. I'm going to teach y'all. I'm going to give you a little. Don't forget that you heard this on this show. This article just says, staff said both the use of TIF districts and the River Edge Redevelopment Zones have allowed the city to undergo, quote, significant changes over the past several years, close quote. But it doesn't attribute who that quote is to. Ding, ding. Um, Aurora is considered to have had the most successful TIF district in the history of the state. Maria, did you know that? Now I know. I didn't. I didn't know that either. The most successful TIF district in the state? Wow. I mean, all we do is win. So let's do the math. We got the most successful TIF district in the state. We got the greatest podcast to ever live. And we got coffee from Treadwell. I mean, all we... Clap for us. Cheers to that. Yeah, word up. Cheers to that. Aren't y'all proud? We got the best water. We got recycled plastic spoons. I mean, we just, right, we are just, we ain't got no garbage can anymore, but that's, well, we, it's way over there. Oh, thank you very much. That's, we got staff. <laughs> thank God. Okay. Uh, properties within that TIF district appreciated in value by some 8,000%. Holy cow. Um, good stuff. The city has 14 at active TIF districts throughout Aurora. That's good news. That's really good news. The time is 8.35 a.m. It's Monday, you guys. We have a special day and a special week ahead of us. And Good Morning Aurora has another surprise for you. It might happen by the end of this week. Um, Maria, if you could, take us to a commercial. Give us a couple more joints and then bring us back, please. Renee Cruz, good morning. And Jen Mendoza. Sherry Tremaine, I'm over here looking at your masterpiece. Word. Okay, get ready for the community. Are you? Oh. Yes. Okay, sorry. Our friends at Aurora Catholic High School have a fantastic fundraiser coming up May 5th through the 7th. Is that the one you did earlier? Was that it? Yeah. Oh, that's all good. I will repeat it. <laughs> this will be the 26th annual Super Saturday Night Fundraiser held in a hybrid fashion and will support great school programs and initiatives. This year, Cinco de Mayo theme is not your average celebration. Shout out to the great to this great institution. Tickets and more information and the registration link will be found in our chat. Senior meal distributions have returned, you guys. State Representative Hernandez, Kifit, um, sorry, Kifuit. And Wheeler. Oh, you destroyed her oh. name. Damn, you massacred it. <laughs> have uh, teamed up once again on specific Mondays through spring and summer. They are May 9th and May 23rd, June 13th, June 27th, July 11th and 25th, August 8th and 22nd, September 12th and 26th, October 3rd and 24th. Adults. 60 years of age or older are eligible for five frozen meals. You are not eligible if you currently are enrolled in the Meals on Wheels program. This will be done in a drive through fashion at St. Athanasius Greek Orthodox Church at 1855 Fifth Avenue in Aurora. Shout out to those great state representatives for all the work they do. 
Wednesday, May 11th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. will be the Home Buyer Education Seminar hosted by the Neighborhood Project. The Neighbor Project, sorry. This event is sponsored by Citibank and will take place at Everlasting Word Church, located at 22nd North Highland Avenue in Aurora. Neighbor Project Homeowner Counseling Services will walk you through the steps of home buying free of charge. This event is open to the public and will be presented in English and in Spanish. This is an important and helpful event for the city of Aurora. For more information, you can call Jeria at six. I'm sorry, at three three one three zero zero three five six six. You can. You can call Jeria. You can call the doctor. You can call the Ghostbusters, but nobody will help you like the Naples Project. Well, thank you very much, Maria, for your your reading of our news. I got something here I'm gonna show you guys on camera. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Judge Renee Cruz, good morning to you, dear sir. GMA, that is right. GMA is also G-A-M-S, the Great American Morning Show. And I don't know, you know, I, me, you guys know me. Tracy Duran knows me. Norman Peterson knows me. You know, hey, man, all I want is for people to have a good time. That's it. I want you at home to say, you know what? It's a good day. Right? That's what we want. Mm -hmm. If you woke up and you stubbed your toe at the edge of your bed, I can't do nothing for you. But I can uh, make sure that the pain doesn't move to your head. Wasn't the best joke ever. I try. Check this out, guys. Yesterday, a fan of our show gave us a piece of artwork that um, I appreciate very much as an artist and as a person who draws. Uh, and the conversation I had with this woman was absolutely wonderful. It's here in the studio. I have not found another frame yet to cannibalize to put it in, but this will be framed. And... This was a really cool piece of artwork from Sherry. Uh, Sherry Tremaine, I believe, is her last name. Uh, she's a fantastic artist, and she did me. She did your boy with charcoal. Look at that. Good morning, Aurora. And here's what's interesting about this picture. She, I was not facing forward when she did this. I was to her, so she would have caught my right side profile. This lady looked at me from the right and got a brother very accurate. And she did a great job, and I appreciate her very much. And this is going on our wall of fame. Made her brother look mad young with them, with them charcoals, though. You know, I was like, girl, put some on the side. So, yeah, she did a great job. Uh, and this is, this is very much appreciated. Thank you very much to Sherry. Yay! All right. All right, all right, all right. Great work, Sherry. Yes, Sherry Tremaine, that's her name. Susan Mazio, good morning to you as well. Rhonda Williams, good morning. Uh, good morning to all of you great people who are tuning in today. Okay, now let's talk about something that I told y'all. I feel like, you know what? Here's the thing about this show. Oh, good morning, Al. Uh, here's the thing about this show. You know... I want this show to be like literally like 90% of people who tune in are parents, right? And as a parent, you're a parent, like we monitor what our kids listen to, what they watch and everything. So we pay attention to what we listen to, what we watch. And I feel like I want to make sure people are safe all the time. You know, that's why we talk about like the cases and everything. And the optimism that we have to see the city come back to life and do fun stuff. Yeah, that's cool and all that, but we got to be safe. Cases have been rising, unfortunately. Um, and we, it wasn't that long ago that we gave the news that the mass vaccination site was closing. Well, now um, another COVID-19 clinic is opening up and we do have the story about that. And this qualifies as that thing.
kids listen to GMA every morning with me before they get on the bus. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a family show. A family show. Shouts out to all the kids, all the young people. Remember, you can do it. I know what you're thinking. You 11. The world sucks. Your mom doesn't know what's going on. You love Brad, but he doesn't love you back. Don't worry. Trust me. Just keep listening to GMA. We'll get you there. Okay, where was I going with this? Um, here we go. The Kane County Health Department has announced it will hold a COVID-19 vaccination clinic May 14th at the mass vaccination site in Batavia. Kane Vax Hub is located at 501 North Randall Road in Aurora. It'll be open from 9 a.m. to noon on that particular day. Not yet designated to be an open site Monday through Fridays, ladies and gentlemen. Do you understand? Only on May 14th from 9 a.m. to noon. <clears throat> Excuse me. All COVID-19 vaccines will be available for all groups aged five years and older. Um, people are encouraged to make an appointment for the clinic at, uh, you can call six, excuse me, 855-452-6382. That number again is 855-452-6382. Or you can go to, and Monica will put this in the chat, canevax.org, please. Thank you very much, Monica. The county's lease at the vaccination hub is set to expire at the end of May. It's unclear if the county will look to extend the lease. Now, I don't work for the county, but if it was me, I would say extend the lease. Right? Mm -hmm. What are the five P's? Proper preparation prevents poor performance. I mean, if cases are on the rise, and I don't know if I'm going to sign my lease, but I got a vax hub, I would just sign it. It'd be better to sign a lease for cases rising and have it be, okay, well, was that many cases? Then cases rising, oh, but our lease, oh, we didn't resign it. Oh, shit, you know? So let's do that. Anyway, Kane County board members have said it is time to consider closing the site and relying on doctor's offices and pharmacies to provide COVID-19 vaccinations. Kane County remains low in transmission status for COVID-19. With 136 cases per 100,000 population as of Thursday last week, only 1.2% of patient beds at area hospitals are being used for COVID-19 cases. And that's according to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. At this point, only half of Kane County residents have received their first COVID-19 booster dose. A list of places that provide COVID-19 vaccines in Kane County is available online at www.kanehealth.com. Calm. The time is 8.45 a.m. Okay. The Aurora Area Interfaith Food Pantry Mobile Pantry is set to distribute free food and household products on Saturday, May 7th from 10 a.m. to noon at Restoration Church Parking Lot, 1460 West Indian Trail Road in Aurora. The public is invited. Admission is free and ID and registration is not necessary. Food items. Diapers, formula, baby food, and feminine hygiene products are among the items to be distributed. Women's empowerment mobile pantries, which are women-only distributions, are planned for the first, excuse me, the third Thursdays of each month. The next women-only pantry is going to be Thursday, May 19th, uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. at Vineyard Aurora Church. That's at 505 East Galena Boulevard. Uh, now, this is important. Because I like a, I like, I like, you know, for me, it's not what you're doing, it's why you're doing it. That's me. I don't know about anybody else. But that's me. Not what you're doing, it's why you're doing it. According to the chair of Aurora Women's Empowerment Foundation, the AWE, quote, our mission is to elevate and empower Aurora area women and future women by making grants to tax exempt nonprofits engaged in meaningful, measurable work that helps women overcome the hurdles of inequity and exclusion propelling them forward with life-changing programs and services, close quote. That quote's attributed to Amy Baldwin. Um, she's the chair of AWE. Now, I was just having a conversation yesterday afternoon with Norma Peterson. 
just yesterday, not even 24 hours ago. And, you know, it dawned on me. The whole problem with the whole thing, that's life, that's work, that's inner relationships, and that is community. The whole, from a woman, from a, from a, uh, from the perspective of women's empowerment, the whole problem is that our societal infrastructure, sports, law, housing, medical accessibility, and the like, including voting, has consistently been unavailable to women. Or they've had to struggle harder in it or come up a little bit harder. God forbid you're black or you're Mexican. So anything that makes that easier, I love it. I don't care what it is. If the fee was $300, if you're not married and now there is no fee, it doesn't matter. I like that. If the purpose is to give people a job or referral services or resume strengthening because women have been traditionally marginalized in these sectors, I love it. And the reason why is because, you know, just my own experience being in the Navy, it is a highly misogynistic organization. I always knew that. I mean, when you're young, though, you're not really seeing it. But then I realized, like, wow, you know what? The Navy's great. But, I mean, it certainly hasn't helped further women empowerment. Not until recently. Now you've got co women commanders of ships. I don't know if there's an all-woman ship yet, but now you have more opportunities. Now there's more women chiefs and chief petty officers. And now there's more uh, women in the uh, uh, within the ranks of officers and and uh, rising and, and, and pay rate. Now it's easier for women to do. That wasn't always the case. And because I know that, because I've seen it, because I've as I told you, I've had guys try to figure out ways to get women fired. Because I know that, I kind of feel like, you know, hopefully I can help, like, change that. You know? Maybe I can, like, provide a platform so, like, that will not happen again. At least not on a local level. And I don't always succeed, but I try. The time is now 8.50. Okay. Uh, let me see. You talked about, we did the whole, we did the food pantry. We did ACC charges with the fundraiser. We did state representatives giving the food. There's something I did not do yet. What was it? Ah, there it is. Okay. Uh, I want to reiterate a group that is a local group here in Aurora, and they have the community market coming up that uh, Maria alluded to. Um, now, also, the Aurora Pride Parade is coming this year as well, and it's going to be in June. The community market is a part of that, but also there's the community fridge. Are you guys familiar with the community fridge? You should be. The community fridge is a way for the most vulnerable in our Aurora population to receive foodstuffs. The fridge is located underneath Indiro. Well, it's not underneath. It's the walkway along the side. It's down there. You'll see it. Uh, it's the walkway of where the water is right down there. Um, donate to that food or that fridge if you can, please. You can put fruit. You can put meats. You can put different things in there. Uh, put healthy food in there. And let's do what we can to stock that up. Indivisible Aurora is doing a great job with that. Uh, they hold once a month public community meetings and dates are promoted on their Facebook and Instagram. Everyone is encouraged to attend. For more information, you can go to www.indivisibleaurora.org. Amongst their, nice, uh, amongst their many areas of focus are 
Community First Project, Community and Policing, Immigrant and Refugee Rights, Community and Education, and the LGBTQ Plus Alliance. The Alliance team assists with organizing the Aurora Pride Festival, and they participate in LGBTQ educational panels, and they speak up for LGBTQ Plus issues. Uh, they are unflinching allies of minoritized communities, minority communities to that end, they unequivocally advocate for community empowerment, civic engagement, democratic values, and working towards justice and equity. Good stuff. Really good stuff. Okay, now, the last thing. Let me see that text message I got. Curtis, can you mention this? No doubt. No doubt. I got y'all. See? It's the only morning show in the world where you can know the people, right? You can't do that on WGN. You got to get a security badge. We need a badge here. You can't just come up in here. We don't, right? We got security. Monique. Um, but uh, you guys can get to know us. You can send us stuff. You can do us that. Uh, send us stuff by going to goodmorningauroraIL at gmail.com and sending us stuff there. Or if you're like Jim Mendoza or someone else who's cool with us, you can just hit your boy in the DMs. All right. Now listen to this, you guys. Um, the For the Kids Children and Teen Resources event is coming up Sunday, May 15th, and that's going to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Java Plus. All raffle proceeds will benefit Mental Revelation Snacks and Drinks are sponsored by our dear friend Annie Kinsley of State Farm. Java Plus located at 1677 Montgomery Road. This is a great way for parents and kids to come learn about opportunities and services available in the local area. Youth Entrepreneur Opportunities, Children Book Authors, ACT and SAT Test Prep, Homeschool Specialists, Tutoring, Teen Life Coaches, and Counselors. All of this will be at your proverbial fingertips if you come on out to Java Plus on Sunday, May 15th. Be there, because I'll be there once again. Hey. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to leave you all with is this. Tomorrow at 215 West Galena Boulevard, there is Tacos and Dagos, Tuesday. It'll be from 4 to 6 p.m., hosted by our dear friend, uh, our friends of the show of Harry Beast Dog Parlor. Uh, many great individuals will be there representing. There will be tacos, there will be puppies, and um, our dear friend DJ Venom may even be DJing. Hopefully, it don't rain. Hopefully, the weather is nice vibrant and beautiful and all of you guys can go on out there now it's unclear yet if a brother will be able to attend i told you that yes night host way i don't know yet we'll see but if i can good morning aurora will be there as well we'll do what we can to um shout out such a great initiative we were there at that very same location um, for the three-year anniversary party for harry beast dog parlor our friends josue and veronica trujillo um are baked into the cake of our show. We wish them a successful and prosperous upcoming event and rest of the year. All right. Uh, so let's see. Female entrepreneurship. That's right. Michael Rayford, Judge Bianca Camargo is here. Love the AWEF. That's our friend Norma Peterson, the executive director of Document the Abuse. Uh, we all love the AWE. Jen Mendoza. The next one will be at, hold on, where'd you go? July 16th at Phillips Park. Oh, that's right. The Moms for Moms Veggie Fair. I will be there for that one as well. Tracy Duran, Maria Chirito, all y'all. We love y'all to death. Okay. Well, the time is 8.56. I got to jump into my, my, I got to put on my cape after this and go attempt to save the world. But it's Monday and I hope that you guys all have a blessed and positive Monday. Uh, the rest of the week is we got a big week ahead of us. We got a big rest of the month ahead of us. Um, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be insane. So get ready for it. Good morning, Aurora. We'd like to thank all of our listeners, all of our fans, and all of our supporters for tuning in to us. We aim to be. We strive to be. Every single day, we walk up to the punching bag of life and we train. Well, it's a speed bag, not a punching bag. But anyway, we, we, every day, every day we try our very best to make you feel special, make you feel happy, make you feel involved, and to give you the absolute best information we can, unfiltered, in a positive fashion and disposition. 
Take care of yourself and each other. Thank you.